16 years is a long time to wait for something as basic as the ability to swat a low-flying threat out of the sky. In that span, drones went from niche reconnaissance tools to mass-produced loitering munitions. Cruise missiles became more common, faster, smarter, and cheaper relative to the damage they can inflict. Helicopters learn to hide behind terrain and pop up only when it's convenient. And yet Belgium Special Operations Regiment spent that entire period without a dedicated, modern, man-portable air defense layer tailored to the way special forces actually fight. The irony is that once the decision was finally made, the impossible part, delivery, took only months. So the real question isn't how Poland moved fast. It's why Belgium moved slowly for so long, and what this contrast tells us about Europe's air defense reality in 2026. Belgium has now announced that its Special Operations Regiment has received the first Polish PO run manpads, a capability its leadership publicly describes as a missing piece for 16 years. That phrasing matters. If a unit has been waiting that long, it usually means the requirement was understood, accepted, and repeatedly deferred. Not rejected, deferred. In European defense politics, deferral is the quiet killer, budgets get squeezed, priorities rotate, procurement cycles drag, and the threat assessment always feels like it can be handled by someone else, somewhere higher up the chain. Air defense, especially short range, tends to fall into that trap because it is not glamorous until it is catastrophic to ignore. You can postpone it right up to the moment your troops are staring at a drone's shadow. Then the timeline suddenly compresses. Belgium signaled intent to buy roughly 200 to 300 launch units in May 2025. The contract followed at the end of July. And by December, the first PO run systems were already in the hands of special operators, seven months from the public intent to first delivery, and roughly five months from contract signature. In a sector where a year can pass just to validate paperwork and production slots, that is not just quick, it is almost disruptive. And that speed is the story, because it hints at something Europe has been relearning the hard way, industrial capacity and political will only look slow until someone decides they are allowed to be fast. Look at what Belgium reportedly ordered in this initial tranche, about 40 launchers and several hundred missiles for around 137 million euros. That is not a national air defense shield, it is a focused capability injection. In other words, Belgium didn't try to solve everything at once. It tried to solve a specific problem, giving a highly mobile regiment the ability to defend itself against the most common and most lethal threats at low altitude, without calling higher echelons and waiting for a larger system to reposition. For special operations, that autonomy is the difference between operating and merely surviving. A manpads is not just a weapon, it is a permission slip to operate under contested skies, at least enough to force an enemy to respect your presence. So why PO run, and why now? Because Poland is one of the few European countries that treated short-range air defense as a production problem rather than a boutique procurement. The reported annual output, over 1,300 PO run units, changes the logic of delivery. If you are producing at scale, a Belgian order of 40 launchers and a few hundred missiles is not a multi-year burden, it is a manageable allocation. That is the industrial base advantage in plain terms, capacity turns urgency into scheduling. And Poland is not stopping there, it has signaled it can expand output by another couple hundred units and is building additional facilities intended to further increase production. Even if you debate the exact comparative numbers, the broader point stands, in Europe, fast delivery, increasingly belongs to whoever already made the decision to manufacture in volume before the next crisis headline. There is another, less obvious reason why this delivery could be so quick, availability. High volume production often creates buffers, completed units, components, or missiles that can be redirected if a customer is ready to sign and pay. That is not magic, it is what mature supply chains do when they anticipate steady demand. And demand is not theoretical anymore. Ukraine has turned the low-altitude air defense fight into a brutal laboratory, 
and PO Run has been part of that ecosystem since early 2022. Every successful interception, every report of counter-countermeasure resilience, every battlefield lesson about seekers and fusing feeds back into credibility. In defense procurement, credibility is currency. When a weapon has real combat reputation, bureaucratic friction tends to soften, because fewer people want to be the one slowing down a proven solution. Technically, PO Run sits in the sweet spot for what many European militaries suddenly need again. It reaches out to roughly 6.4 kilometers and can engage up to around 4 kilometers in altitude, with a multispectral seeker designed to resist decoys like flares. The missile's mass and warhead are tuned for the manpad's role, portable, lethal, and fast enough to punish low-flying targets. The presence of a proximity fuse is not a trivial detail either, it improves lethality against small targets and near-miss scenarios, which is increasingly relevant in a world where drones are not just numerous, but sometimes physically small and hard to hit cleanly. In simple terms, PO Run is built for the messy, close-in air threat environment that has become normal. But step back, a man pads does not win an air war. It shapes behavior. It forces aircraft to fly higher, to change routes, to allocate suppression assets, to spend more time planning and less time striking. For a special operations regiment, that shaping effect is amplified, because the unit's survivability and freedom of movement depend on uncertainty. If an adversary knows your teams have no organic air defense, the sky becomes an easy tool of intimidation. If they know you might have a credible man pads, the sky becomes contested, even if only locally and temporarily. And that changes everything about how an enemy uses drones, helicopters, and low-level fixed-wing assets against you. So what does this procurement say about Belgium? It suggests a strategic pivot from air defense as a centralized asset to air defense as a distributed necessity. Europe's post-Cold War model leaned heavily on the assumption of air superiority, or at least air policing under NATO cover. The Ukraine war shattered that comfort. Suddenly, low-cost aerial threats can appear anywhere, and the time between detection and impact is often measured in minutes. Centralized systems are essential, but they cannot be everywhere. Distributed layers, short-range, mobile, simple to deploy, become the connective tissue of survival. The fact that Belgium prioritized its special operations regiment is telling, elite units are often used as early adopters because they feel capability gaps sooner and more painfully. And what does it say about Poland? It reinforces that Poland is not just buying security, it is manufacturing it. When a country can produce a system at scale, it gains influence that goes beyond diplomacy. It becomes a supplier of urgency. In NATO, that matters because collective defense is increasingly shaped by who can replenish stocks quickly, who can export without hollowing their own readiness, and who can surge production when the threat curve bends upward. Industrial power becomes operational power. The real lesson here is uncomfortable but clear. Belgium did not suddenly discover air defense in 2025. It rediscovered the consequences of not having it. Poland did not suddenly become fast, it invested in being ready to be fast. Sixteen years of waiting followed by five months of delivery is not a miracle story. It is a case study in how modern deterrence works, the battlefield rewards whoever aligns strategy, procurement, and production before the clock starts. And the clock is already running for everyone else. The question for Europe now is simple, how many other, 16-year gaps, are still sitting quietly in force structures, waiting for the next crisis to expose them?